<laughs> Every week, we're someplace new. This week, we're in Granbury, Texas. All right. Here's our live are studio hanging out audience. Here live from at the, the lake, lake house, house <laughs> in Granbury, Texas. So welcome, welcome. It's Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the national educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we are, like I said, here in Granbury, Texas. We are here with the folks from So Much Love, which is a quilt shop here in town. And we are excited to be here. But their shop, and we'll show you a little bit, is really tiny. So, well, tiny, it's just really packed got a lot of it's stuff in dense. there so we are here so we can actually have an audience which is super fun um because that's the way we like to do our so together tuesday so thanks for everybody who came out i appreciate you being here and uh and we have a whole bunch of people on the audience there. So today we are doing a patchwork quilt. But before we get too far into it, I want to make sure and introduce the shop owners who have invited us. So come on over guys. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can move my mic. So we're on the other side. Okay, I can just hold it. There we go. All right. <laughs> so this is Lori and Mark, and you Hello. guys own So Much Love, yes. right? And how long have you owned the shop? It will be three years in July. So three years. Not very long. No. Like not in the, you know, the big overarching picture of quilt shop ownership. Right. Which is often right. decades. And, and two years in pandemic mode. Right. So. <laughs> true. Nice. True. Nice. So I'm not sure if that's more years in actuality <laughs> or less. I don't know. Feels a little weird. So you guys are new basically to the area. You started yes. a quilt shop. So you didn't have a quilt shop before. No. I you weren't a even teacher. a quilter, right? No. I only started quilting in November 2017. <laughs> so two years later, we were um, quitting our jobs and moving to Granberry and opening a quilt store. So we loved it great. so much. So great. So what do you guys, what do you think is the, um, like the defining feature of your, of your shop? What do you guys want people to walk away with knowing about you? Well, we special, we're an overall full service quilt store. We have classes, we kit, we make our own kits of mm -hmm. a lot of collections. We have customers who come in and they want us to help them, um, design a quilt mm -hmm. and we design it for them and go, oh, that's really lovely. Let's get it up. Uh, we do a lot of that. Cool. We offer long arm services. Mm -hmm. We rent our long arm out. Right. We have a lot of cuddle. It is our absolute favorite fabric mm -hmm. for backing mm -hmm. and for snuggling up with. And so we have a mm -hmm. lot of cuddle fabric and uh, we really uh, just like to be a shop where people can come in and bounce ideas off mm -hmm. and find just the right fabric for yeah the and you and you both work for the shop right we yes we do a lot of t-shirt quilts mm -hmm. memory, uh, quilts. memory quilts and we use a lot of cuddle on the back of those yeah so because it makes it makes a big difference right. in really the fabrics or mm -hmm. in the in the quilt finish so we went and visited your shop yesterday so let's see if we can run the little video and we'll show you how cute the shop is. And we're sorry we can't be there today, but we're going to show you how cute it is. So, Michael, if you can go ahead and run that video. There's Here rolling. we go. All right. So this is their little shop in downtown Granbury, I guess you call it. And <laughs> it is historic Granbury. And it's right off the square. So if you ever come to visit Granbury, that's where you go. Is it Granbury or Granbury? Yeah. Granberry. Um, it's a beautiful little old house that they've done a whole lot of restoration in and um, including those ceilings. And uh, they have a, quite a bit of cuddle. It was really great because we were talking, Lori, yesterday is that you have a really nice selection of a lot of different things, including a lot of prints, solids, emboss, luxe cuddle, all sorts of stuff um, that I was really I was impressed with the variety, including the fabrics were used for the kits. Got all sorts of yeah patterns, rulers everything it was great um i love visiting shops like this that actually carry a little bit of everything for what i might possibly want and they have a really nice selection including some mink which we were happy to touch <laughs> bunch of kits and you can see it's like these little room room to room to room um, as we go around we'll show you all the stuff nice nice variety we're going to be doing kits next week, too. So if you have bought one of those kits or you want to buy a kit, we're talking them next year or next week. Also, 505 spray. More cuddle, more cuddle, more cuddle. It's everywhere. It was so good. And me and my slides. I was trying to hide. To see me hide. <laughs> me, that was great. The bus. Back <laughs> and they do sell lot. baby locks, which I'll be sewing on today. So um, they are a... A dealer there. We're doing a classes, all of the cuts. And then, of course, we have to show you the little clearance room because it's 
you know, packed full of fun. That was the clearance room, right? And, and our panels. And the panels. And the panels. Look at that, puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Hawk. That's true. That's They've got true. puppies. Here's Mark in the hey, shop. <laughs> Super fun. As you can see, it's just packed full of stuff, but you can obviously see why there was no, no place for us to set up. And this cute little quilted chair. I love mm -hmm. it. I mean, upholstered. Yeah, super cute. Really nice selection of notions and everything that you guys have, you have online, right? Yes, you do. Okay, so everything is online. So if you see anything here that you're like, oh my gosh, I've been looking for that. This is a great way to uh, to get it is to just follow up with them on their website, if which we did mention. Sec, so sorry. much love. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so much love. Texas.com is their website and uh, you can check them out there. They do ship nationwide. So anything, you could see me shopping over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this stone wall is great. That is a dinosaur bone in the fireplace wall. And then that is a big amorite fossil. I don't know what an amorite is. It's a, it's kind of like a nautilus shell. Oh, like a, a big okay. seashell. Got it. And because they do a lot of long arming and they do a ton with cuddle, I decided to bring the little quilt I'm working on for, uh, for Michael over to the shop. And she quilted it with some cuddle on the back which they do a lot of. And we're going to talk a little bit today about quilting with cuddle on both sides. Oh, but up. we talked, uh, <laughs> we talked a bunch yesterday about this and she does something that I haven't seen a lot of quilt shops do, which is she uses the same color thread on the front as she does the cuddle color on the back. So it's a dark gray and using dark gray thread and that will hide any of the nap that comes through, which sometimes people um, don't particularly like. I never care. I'm like, it's soft. It's fine. Okay. But that's a great solution. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So great full service shop that does all sorts of things. Um, like I said, they sell all, the, sell, sell all of the good stuff. They have a ton of cuddle and they do a lot of long arming with cuddle. So that was really fun to, um, I was been saving up that, that for a while, that, that quilt top for a couple weeks now. And I was like, I'm going to get there and they know what they're doing. Um, they did. And it's finished. And I get to bind it now. So yay. Um, all right. So that's a little bit about the shop that we're at. Thanks for joining us here. Thanks for hosting us so much. Love. We appreciate you. And um, today we're going to be doing the patchwork cuddle quilt is what we're doing today. So it is national quilting month, which is March, which segues into you need to sign up for it. We're having a big, huge giveaway, just like we do every year for National Quilting Month. It is a $4,500 grand prize. It'll be divvied up by three to three people. And if you want to be entered to win, you just need to go to our website, to the blog. So our blog on the website. Um, so go there and you can sign up to be one of the winners. And um, there was something else I need to tell about it. I can't remember what it is. Pop it up on the screen if there's something, Michael. Um, <laughs> all of our vendor partners. Oh, I mean, yeah. we should all shout out vendor, to all the vendor partners. partners that are contributing to this package. Totally. It's not $4,500 worth of fabric. It is all sorts of things. So scissors and thread and cutters and uh, there's an AccuQuilt thing in there. Like all sorts of things with our vendor partners. So super exciting to have that yet again. So make sure that you enter to win. Also, at the end of today, we will be giving away a beginner box kit. So that is what we'll be giving away at the end of our show today online. So if you share the video to your friends, your favorite sewing groups, all that sort of stuff, and that's that little arrow that's kind of like a little crooked, crooked arrow. Um, underneath, it'll be, I can't remember what it is, like comments, something, like, react, I don't know, like, comment and share are usually the little buttons that are underneath the video and you can share it with you. Like I said, your sewing friends or your sewing groups and then you'll be entered to win. And at the end we'll choose a winner and we'll send you a kit. So every week we do that. So make sure you join us. Okay. We'll also give um, a kit away to you in here. So we have one more to give away in person. All right. Is that all the stuff that I have to tell them? I think we're okay. I think we're good with the yeah with all boom, the, those boom, details. Boom, 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 boom. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, like I said, it's National Quilting Month, so we are kicking it off with a patchwork quilt done out of cuddle, and we're going to talk today about the patchwork quilt pattern that we have, which you can download if you go to our blog, and uh, you can also get it from our free patterns page. So let's show the ingredients list, Michael, and talk about that. So that is. You're going to need, and you can get the kit from so much love texas.com. But if you're going to buy it separately, you're going to need a half a yard of the fairy tale digital cuddle, a 
a half yard of the Paisley Floral Digital Cuddle, two and a half yards of Water Spot Digital Cuddle, a yard and seven eighths, or heck, just get two yards, of Cuddle Three Lilac, three eighths yard of Chenille Snow, and that's for the binding. Polyester batting is what I recommend. We're going to talk all about what you can use for the middle, including polyester. 9014 stretch machine needle, polyester thread, felt tip marker, or ballpoint pen. A rotary cutter and mat, micro serrated scissors, or a craft knife. Long flower head pins, or, or fabric clips. I use the pins. Walking foot basting spray, and the binding with cuddle booklet. So if you haven't seen our binding with cuddle booklet, that's a download that you can get from our blog that is specifically done to um, explain how to do binding with cuddle. So you can do it with, um, you can bind all sorts of things with cuddle and that's just a special booklet that'll walk you through all those steps. So if you download the pattern, make sure that you also get that binding with cuddle because that's where the instructions are on how to do that part. Yes, huh? I, I think we have there. those kits. Those two bags right there we are the do. two different kits that are available. Uh, online we do. Here so, from so, so we lap, are right? showing. Yeah. So we're showing one kit today, and then we have two kits available. So uh, Lori and I worked together to try to figure out which fabrics would work and um, all that sort of stuff. If you want to pop up the um, picture, Michael, that shows this kit all finished. There we go. So nice. that's what this is a little, just a mock-up, a digital mock-up. Thanks, Rose. Um, <laughs> on how that'll look if you use these fabrics. So she has both of these kits available and you can find them on her website. So much love, Texas.com. Okay. So that's what the kits look like. All right. So it's a, it's a decent chunk of uh, fabric. Do you know how much it, it runs? 99.95. 99.95. Okay. And we need a backing fabric you, too. Right? No, all the backing is in there? It's in there. It's Got in it. there. You just need to get batting and all of your other stuff. So if you're interested in making the kit, you can choose either one. Like I said, I'm doing the fairy tale today. All right. All right. Okay. I think that was it. I have to like reset my brain. All right. So I think I have everything that I need. So I wanted to talk to you about how to do patchwork with cuddle. And there are a couple of different things. We're going to talk about a bunch of different techniques today. So while we're working through the process of making a quilt, I'm actually going to talk to you more about how you can do it and your different choices and why you might make those choices. All right. So if you have any questions about it, please put them up in the comments and Hawk will try to read me once they're important. And uh, right. Oh, and you know, just, you know, fun, fun, just fun. fun too. That, those are okay. Yeah. Fun <laughs> and comments oh, are also, great. by the way, live studio audience, I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Yeah, if you have a question, true. smack, throw something at me. <laughs> but gently, just in case it misses him. Just saying. Okay. I'll do my best. <laughs> All right. So in the kit that we're doing, um, that we did this with, we use digital cuddle. As you heard, like a bunch of those are digital cuddles. We have the uh, solid is out of a regular cuddle three, and the others are out of the digital cuddle. I want to show you the difference with those and why we might do it slightly differently. All right. So here we go. So this is, see if we can get this, get it in the light. Here we go. So here's the digital cuddle. And when they print this, it kind of smashes the fabric down. Come on, focus, little guy. I don't know if being closer is going to help. Maybe. Being further. I don't know. Nope, I think I that's as good as we get right now. Okay. It is thin, though. We are not in a metropolitan area with metropolitan Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. It's true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, are, it, we are in an amazing venue. <laughs> and we are doing our best. That's right. So the Cuddle 3 is a lot thicker than the Digital Cuddle, which makes the Digital Cuddle a little bit funkier to work with just because it um, is so, I don't know what the right word is. Limp is what I want to say. And that's just not, not the nicest word. But it just has more flexibility. More what? Floopy. Floopy. Floppy. <laughs> Loopy, floppy. floppy. There we go. It just doesn't have flimsy. All of those words. Yeah, there we okay. Go. So it doesn't work quite the same as working with a cuddle three. So I put together the whole kit using just the, just the fabrics. I will say that if you're new to working with cuddle or you're not super comfortable with dealing with the stretch and the pull and having to like feed things along, another idea is to use SF 101. So Pellon SF 101 is a product that I really like. So come on over and show this, see if we can get it to focus um, a little bit. 
will stay further away. So on this side, it has it has glue bits that I can feel. And on this side, it's just woven cotton. So it's a really thin woven cotton that has a fusible glue on the back. And it is fabulous for working with cuddle when you want it to actually work like a woven. So for me, if I were doing anything more complicated for this patchwork quilt, I would definitely want to put this on the back of it. I suggest it if you're new or you're not super comfortable with it because it will make it really easy to sew. So I want to show you kind of both. So we're going we're gonna to do some cutting and sewing here pretty quick, but I wanted to show you this and how we can do it. And then I'll show you how we each of them thin and sew. All right. So this is a piece that I did that is the the digital cuddle and um, hold on. I meant to bring this over and I forgot. So let me grab, this is the piece of the other one. So this is the water spot, which I think is super cute. Okay. And it's a little bit, um, it's a little hard to see on the website, how big those, those dots are, but they're, I mean, you can see it come right in my hand. They're, they're big dots. Okay, this is the floral that we have. So this one isn't backed. Okay, so this was the Paisley floral. This one is backed with the, the SF-101. So you can see how this one, flimsy, drapey, whatever you want to call it. Okay, this one, not as much. It's got more body to it. All right, so it makes it a little bit easier to work with because it's got a little bit of body to it. And it also makes it so it works kind of like a woven. So if you're going to do this, you're going to iron the SF-101 on the back, just like I did here. You want to show my iron? So you can be like, look, this is the iron you use. <laughs> okay. Like, here we go. Ba -ding. Nice. All right. So it's my little Aliso travel shout iron that I like so much. Um, so shout out to Aliso because it works really well. Um, and I just use it with my wool mat. Just press it. Hold it. Press it. Do not iron it. Okay. And with a medium heat iron. So a common question we get is, can you iron cuddle? Yes, you can. Okay, you just need to use a medium heat. So use whatever it's for a polyester or a synthetic setting. Press it. Do not iron it. So just press and I count to five. And then I press and I count to five and I do it twice to hold it all down. And then it holds really well. Okay, at that point. So I usually iron it all onto the back of my fabric and then I cut out my pieces. All right. So on this one, we had some different size pieces and we're not going to worry about that yet. I'm just going to cut out a couple of pieces here and show you how it works. So this is just that fabric. Okay. With the backing. With the SF-101 on it. I feel like I ran over a pin or something. That's not cool, man. Not cool. Okay, so we're going to do a seven-inch strip here because that's what my other ones are. I must have... Uh oh. I know. Is it, is it time to talk about cowboy hats? Oh, it might be. <laughs> People are like, what? Cowboy what are you hats? talking about, Hawk? You and you're crazy. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think, I don't know if I have a blade. I don't think you do right now. Actually. I don't think so. We okay. were not prepared to swap a blade in a rotary cutter <laughs> this morning. I was not. Okay, so I'm going to cut these just so that they're the same size. Okay, so you can see this doesn't make any difference with the mess. I'm still going to get a mess because it's still cutting the nap. Okay. Oh, look at There's a different one. Ta-da. Okay. So I've got this. A little bit of a mess. I'm just going to pull it off. Okay. And Lori knows she cuts a lot of cuddles, so she's not worrying about me throwing it on the floor. <laughs> it, all <laughs> it all vacuums up just fine. Okay, so I've got these two pieces cut. All right, we're going to sew these together in just a minute. But I want to show you with another piece how it sews when you don't have cuddle. Okay, so when you don't have the, the SF-101 on it. Got it. Yep. Okay, so these are two pieces out of the pattern that are cut that tell you all the pattern cutting pieces. And we'll talk about that in a second. But I want to I want to sew these two together. All right. So I'm going to put these. And actually, I just realized I should talk about how the pattern piece goes out so that I know where my piece goes. Because I remember that my square goes over here. So each block is made up with a 
wide piece, okay, two wide pieces, and then three smaller pieces. All right. In the pattern, if you download it, you'll be able to see all the different layouts, and each of them are done a little differently. Does each piece have a line that sort of indicates which direction really the nap is supposed to go? So when you cut it out, it will tell you how to do it. And there is a picture in there that shows you especially how to cut all of these out. So all of these are cut the same direction. And all of these are cut the same direction. I think that's true. Yes, I just got a thumbs up. So these are all cut the same direction. These are cut the same direction. So it's easier to keep track of the nap. Just the purple gets a little bit... Um, fidgety with it, but it, there is instructions and they were great. So I used the pattern as written and it worked out wonderfully. Okay. So if you get a nap wrong, what happens, Hawk? What did I do yesterday? I you shrugged don't... it off. <laughs> 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 so don't worry about it. I'll show you where mine went a little bit backwards, but each one of these blocks are put together. Okay. So you'll have one, two, three blocks with two pieces of sashing. All right, and the other one, we we'll use different colors and we use um, navy for this. All right, all right. So I'm gonna push this up here and before we sew this, I want to cut the other piece. If I can find it. Okay, I put all these things, like I put this here and I'm gonna put this here. Organization I think, with I a patchwork quilt, it's a big deal. I think I'm organized until I can't find it, okay. All right, so here is my piece. I will tell you that when I started cutting this out, um, I started fussy cutting really carefully. And then I realized I didn't have enough fabric to fussy cut. So I got a little more, you know, it's just random. Especially here. especially with the kids. <laughs> you have enough fabric to, to do this. Don't get picky about it. Don't get picky where about the it. Design lands. Don't get <laughs> picky fine. about it. Okay, so what, what I wanted to show you is that this has to get cut into a seven inch square. My ruler here is six inches. I have one that's six and a half inches. I do not have one that's seven inches. So what I had to do was kind of figure out like, okay, so three and a half inches will be my center. So I figure out where I want it to be. So here is three and a half inches down, three and a half inches down. This is the center. Can you come in and see if we can show that? So if my block were seven inches, the middle of my block is three and a half, right? That makes sense? Uh -huh. Okay, so three and a half over and three and a half down. This will be my center. So when I'm looking at this, I'm taking this point and I'm trying to figure out where I want it to be in the thing. So I kind of want this cloud to be the middle. So set. you are fussy cutting. I'm fussy cutting <laughs> a little bit, but okay. not crazy. So I was, I was trying to be very careful and only cut around this and only cut around. and you know i was trying to center oh, the big motifs got it and now i'm going to center an, a smaller motif so yes a little bit of fussy cutting okay all right let's see if this blade works better okay so i'm cutting across the top and the side of my square okay so i try to start on this end so that i'm three and a half inches over and three and a half inches down according to my ruler Okay, so I, instead of measuring from this side over three and a half inches, which, as you can imagine, will get confusing. Okay. There we go. All right, so that's cut. So now when I need to have seven inches, the problem is, is that I could take my little ruler and I could go over here and I can mark. I can mark seven inches, but I can't really just cut this. I have to like mark it and mark it and try to like change things around. Well, there's an easier way of doing it, and I'm going to show you. So I'm going to put my ruler here. So this is one inch. Let's see if I can show you this. So here's my cut. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to move it too much because I don't want to get it wrong. So I'm putting my seven inch mark here on my cut and my one inch line here. So I know it's seven inches long right here. Okay, and one inch here. So if I add my six inches here, I have seven inches. Got it. Okay. Because you have a six inch ruler that you're going to add to this ruler. Right. Unfortunately, I have a very long six inch ruler. So watch out. <laughs> Coming at me. Okay. <laughs> Moving the iron a little more. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to line these babies up. Sorry. Okay. 
So now I'm going to make sure that's on my, the seven inch line is still on my seven inch here. It happens to be 17 here because I put my ruler down wrong. So let me move it around so it doesn't confuse anyone. Okay, so we'll make seven match with seven. Okay, there we go. So now my cut that I did before is underneath the seven inch line and my one inch, I'm gonna finagle it around till it's right. And now I can get a seven inch square when I cut here. Okay, so I always wanna try to hold this down too while I make sure that that's actually loose just because if it starts to move, trying to line it up to get it cut right again is a pain. There we go. I didn't check that one first. So I'm gonna try to get my ruler lined back up, not move things too much. I'm coming in and cut that. All right, so that's how you can sort of fussy cut the squares just a little bit, not crazy fussy cutting. All right, but how you can get a seven inch square out of a six inch ruler, as long as you have another ruler nearby. All right, so hopefully that was helpful and not super confusing. I think we're good. I, th I think I think you talked us in and out of that. Good. So use the, use <laughs> so use the extra ruler. Use the mark. Okay. Use the marks that are on here to get the square size that you want, and then just add to it. It's a lot easier than marking six inches and adding an inch, in my opinion. Once you get it down, it's super easy. All right. So here's my square. This is how my block is going to turn out. These are wider because I've got my seam allowances in here. Okay, so that's why these don't match here. Does that make sense? These, yes. are, these look wider because we have to do seam allowances. So are you ready to just start sewing? Okay, let's do it. Somebody's do ready. It. Yes. I'm not sure I am, but let's try anyway. <laughs> All right. So let me move these things around. All right. So I had, oh, shoot. I did it again. I moved things. Here they are. Okay, so I've got the, oh, and I'm sitting at a table today, guys. It's kind of weird, but it's because we're doing a quilt, and a quilt is really hard to do standing up. And we're uh, we're using a local table as well because it's nice to have a little extra room. Yes, it's a very large table compared to mine. I love it. All right, so this is the. I'm just petting petting my nap, making right. sure it goes the right direction. Are back we looking? Down. Sorry. I'm back down. <laughs> So here's my fabric. This is the stuff that is backed with the SF-101. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this. And I'm actually going to pin it and sew. I'm going to pin it and sew and then I cut some off and do it the other direction. Because what I want to show is the difference between, so this is the lengthwise. All right, this doesn't ever have stretch. So even in my piece here, it doesn't have stretch because it's the lengthwise of the fabric. Okay, so lengthwise of cuddle, no stretch. Widthwise of fabric, stretch. Okay, when you put the SF-101 on it, the widthwise, there's still no stretch. All right, so that's, the, that's kind of the purpose of putting the SF-101 on it. So when I'm sewing with the cuddle and I have this on here, I don't really need to pin quite as much. And I'm gonna show you how this sews. So this is really just for me to show you how it works so that when you're making your choices, you can make the right choices for you. So we're doing it with a straight stitch. I've upped it to a three stitch length mm -hmm. and I'm using, yes, Metrocene from Mettler. Right. Okay, and I'm using my, my trusty gray do you have any uh, mm -hmm. suggestions for uh, for pinning differently for left-handed folks? Um, I don't bug them about pinning my way anymore. <laughs> we talked about this the other day. Um, if you are pinning parallel to the raw edge, like I like to pin a lot of times for cuddle, it doesn't matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed. You're going to be able to take that out. Okay, a lot of lefties pin so that it comes this direction. And they could take the pins out this way. Um, I would suggest if you're left-handed, pinning perpendicular is almost always just a safe bet. I mean, yeah, no, parallel is almost always a safe bet. Got it. Okay. 
So I'm going to sew this. I'm going to take this pin out and I'm going to show you just how easy these kind of stick together. Because it has that stuff on it. That stuff, as in SF101. Okay, so there's my seam. Straight stitch. It's a pretty straight little seam. So just fine. All right, so now I want to sew across the top. And I'm going to pin it here. And I'll pin it this direction instead, parallel, okay, with my double pinning because I don't want it to move. This is, this is the way that the stretch goes. But the stretch in the fabric doesn't really exist with this. Because so you stabilized it. Right. Got it. So I'm going to start, start sewing. And you can see what I like about doing it this way is that the fabric doesn't push forward at all. So a digital, this is something we'll show when I'm working with the digital, is that it's going to push forward a bit. When you're working with the SF-101, it doesn't, okay? So this makes it much easier to work with. So you can see, easy to work with, totally fine. Okay, so why would I not want to use the SF-101 if it's this easy, right? Okay, and part of it is because it makes it stiff and adds some heaviness to the fabric. So it adds a bulk to all of this, to all of your seams that uh, some people don't necessarily like. All right, so if the seams on this, so let me show you when I sew these together. And to be honest, it's another material to purchase too. But if it's it, another material to purchase, it helps, you, have it, to, it helps. you have to spend the time ironing it. So I did this one without using the uh, SF-101 because it was one less thing to do. <laughs> and you can absolutely do it without the, um, without interfacing everything, stabilizing everything. Does it make it easier in some ways? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to pin this. Because I'm using this without any stabilizer on the back, I'm going to make sure and be really good about pinning it. Okay, I'm going to show you the difference between sewing it with um, cuddle on, or uh, digital cuddle on one side and cuddle three on the other. Okay, so this way I'm sewing, this is the cuddle three on top, digital. This is the not stretchy way. Okay, so I don't really have any stretch going here. Okay. Okay, so not terribly hard. The, uh, the fabric doesn't move too much. But still, you take the time to double pin. I do. Even even knowing that this is a this is probably the most stable seam choice you have. I do, and I'll pin um, sometimes less on these seams, but you'll see that it still comes in as a necessity. All right, so this is the square that I did, and I'm gonna sew on this piece. So this one, if you remember right, I sewed with the purple on top, which is the C3. Okay, the cuddle three. This one, I'm gonna sew it with the digital on top. So one thing I will tell you is when you're doing this pinning is to make sure that your ends match and I lay it down first. If I try to pin this, this is what people want to do is hold it up and pin it. You see it like it just keeps, this keeps moving. It's not even, I try to get it back over there and it will, the thing will just move on me again. So see, look at that. It's just what it does. All right, so if you find yourself, and I find this in classes all the time, that people get really frustrated. And they're like, it just keeps moving. I'm like, it will. That's what it does. So if you lay it down, get it in position, and then pin it there, it's a little bit easier and less likely to move on you. So as always, I like to pin my ends, pin the middle, pin the second row. I kind of look over the top, make sure they're matching still. So the less I move, the better. We've also talked about it before with the nap. So the nap in this is going this direction on both pieces. So they're just fine. They don't like to misbehave too much when they're going the same way. When they're going opposite, which we'll do later, that gets a little, a little funkier. So even now I can see, this is what I'm talking about, that the uh, digital just has more movement. So it wants to ripple on the top here more than it did when I pinned this on top. 
All right. The reason I'm telling you all of this is because I want you to be able to make the choices that work best for you. And I want you to know that it isn't you that's causing the fabric to do that. It's just the fabric. Okay. So we're going to learn some ways of working around that to make it work for you. Okay. So take these pins out. And I can see this has a little bit more puff. So I'm going to use my stiletto a little more to keep it where I want it to be. Make sure I'm taking my pins out as I go. At the very last second, though. And, yeah. you're, and you're still leaving that inside row in place. Right. And then look, it still grew on me just a little. Okay. Yeah, it happens. Even to the professionals. Okay. Is it easier to sew with the nap? Or against the nap. The question from the studio audience, is it easier to sew with the nap or against the nap? And I don't notice a difference in the direction I'm sewing. So sewing this way up against the nap or sewing it down this way, I don't really no notice a difference then. When I do notice is when my fabric snaps are going in different directions, then you can't really pick a direction and then they fight each other. I don't, so which way did that, I, oh. That's a goob. Um, a goob. A Show goob. Look oh, at that. look at that. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. How about, okay. it? How about an oopsie? It's an oopsie. All right. Okay. I'm going to fix that because it needs to be flat. Okay. So I'm just going to use my little blade here and cut some thread. So I kind of just saw it back and forth where the thread is. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Sometimes it cuts the fabric. Most of the time it doesn't. Okay. So what I found is that you actually have to push it pretty hard to get it to cut through the fabric. Okay. So that happens sometimes um, with the feed dogs. When I, did, when I pushed it in, it got pushed down like this. Gotcha. And I started sewing. So I'll try to be better about it. Um, also, so this, usually you like start in and then kind of backstitch for a second too, right? Is that, is that I, something you do? Yeah, and I did that on this one. I started in just a little bit, but because I pushed this down when I'd already started, there was nothing that was going to happen. Gotcha. All right, pushed down. Um, so this one, I, I sewed against the nap, and it ended up a little bit short. So we'll see if there's any sort of um, rhyme or reason with that. I'm going to turn this over to make sure that that doesn't happen again. I don't accidentally push it down and sew off this end. Okay, I'm going to fix that. That, I have to move that. I always think I sew with my feet in the weirdest positions, usually because the foot pedal is in the weirdest places. All right, that's better. I won't, okay. I won't, I won't show your feet. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Today. All right, yeah, <laughs> not today. Um, all right, not today, Satan. Just kidding, you're not Satan. Okay. <laughs> I love you. All right. <laughs> so here we've got those pieces sewn together. All right. So you can see a little bit of a difference in how it sews. Now, this is when, so all of those pieces are cut out. And this should be, if I've sewn a consistent 13 or a half inch seam allowance, it should be 13 inches across here. I can get it to do that and it's okay. So I will say that the only thing that you have to be careful with this is that your seam allowance is about a half an inch that it stays consistent if it's a little more than a half an inch you're fine if it's a little bit less than a half an inch you're going to be in trouble because this will have grown it'll be wider than this fabric will be okay so air on so, the side of air on the side of getting it right <laughs> 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 so this huh. is going to be one that you really do want to try to hard to get your half inch seam allowance right most of the time i'm like half inch ish is fine this one because we pre-cut things that they need to match they should match i'll show you when we get to the other part they don't match on part of it and i'm just going to chop it off and make it fit okay so let's come over here in front of the machine so i can see what i'm doing Okay, so I'm going to iron or um, pin these together. And I'm going to do the same thing like we talked about before, where I'm going to pin one end. Okay. And then I'm going to pin the other end. And then I'm going to stretch them to make them fit. All right. Because part of it, you're not really, you don't want to stretch too much. So if it's off very much, you don't want to stretch. But this, I know that my 
fabric kind of wants to come together here. So it's not really laying nice and flat. If we were doing um, patchwork in cotton, this is when we would smush these seams, we would press them and make it nice and flat. Because we can't do that in cuddle, because it doesn't really hold because it's knit fabric, you have to just kind of stretch them to be flat. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. If you, if you stretch it too much along this way, though, it'll start to curl, right? It, uh, well, it'll start to curl, but it will also gather because one side will have been stretched as it's right. sewn, and then it will kind of gather in. So you don't want to really stretch. You just want to get it so that it'll make sure it lays flat. But these are two different layers now because this one has the seam in it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this, and I'm going to try to pin that open because I want to sew it from the purple side. I have an easier time sewing a straight line from the cuddle three side than the digital cuddle. So I'm gonna try to keep that on top. This is where we have, if I did it right, whew, uh, is that your seam or, or your nap is coming down which, and this nap is going up. So where these come together, they're kind of arguing against each other. All right, so they're gonna keep moving and See this? So if I put them together, they shift. And what I want is them to be up here. And then as soon as I let go, they move. Okay. And that's just because the naps are going in two different directions. And that's just part of how they work. Sorry. <laughs> but really just kind of have to give up the fight too much. That's a great question. If you decided to use the SF-101 mm -hmm. uh, all the way back at the beginning yep. of your choices, how does that wash? Uh, it washes up totally fine. You need to make sure that you actually press it really well. So the uh, SF-101 comes with a paper wrapped around it. And when you get it, a lot of times they'll ask you if you want the instructions. And I will say that most people will say no. And then they won't ever read the instructions on how you are supposed to adhere it to your fabric. And with the SF-101, it has instructions on how to do it. I believe there's steam involved. Um, and you want to make sure and look at that. Make sure and read what the what the actual stabilizer says that you want to do. If you adhere it correctly, it's not going to come off. All right? It's just going to be stuck on there, and it's great. We talked about it a little bit, uh, Lori and I did yesterday, on using a good quality stabilizer for that because she uses the same thing for T-shirt quilts, which I have done as well. And I like the SF-101 for that. Okay. Was that enough information? That was. I think okay. we got. I think we're. I think we're good. Okay. If you use the SF one hundred and one, you're gonna. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. You're using batting in this. Yes. Yes. Is there a possibility that with the SF one hundred and one, you wouldn't necessarily need the batting? Uh, yes, but I would use a different backing. So on this one, we're using the water spot for the backing. Mm -hmm. And because that's a digital cuddle, any sort of lumps back here will show. So your seam allowances would show through the fabric. If you didn't have the batting. If, as if you didn't have the batting to corner, kind of even it out. mush into. Okay, yes. that makes total sense. Okay. Got it. So I wanted to point out the fact that if you look at this, you can see the white underneath my fabric underneath the purple that it's popping out. So as much as I was talking about try, trying to keep it a half an inch seam allowance, what I'm looking at is my half an inch is this edge and I keep one of the fabrics there. It is impossible <laughs> to keep both of them there. So don't try to win that fight. Just try to keep them as even as you can and do your best. Just try not to take um, too small of a seam allowance or get that, let them get too far off. All right. So, but they will get a little bit off and that's okay. So at the end here, one of the things I like to do is take the pin out and stab my little stiletto into it and then make sure that that guides right to the end. So I kind of just use that as a pin that last little bit. Sorry. All right. There's my little wobble where I stopped and talked. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay, so there's my little seam allowances coming right along. You can see the seam allowances do their little fluttery thing. And we'll talk about how to deal with that later. Right, Hawk? There's a plan. <laughs> I saw the plan. You guys, she's got a, she's got a, she's got a trick. I got a trick it's to deal great. with that. I'm it impressed. It works out pretty well. So this is one of the things that as a patchwork quilter, and I love doing cotton quilts, this starts to feel a little 
fidgety for me because I can't get it to lay flat. You cannot, it is not going to happen. You get to lay it flat when you actually so um, base it onto your backing. Um, yeah, it doesn't work right now. You can't get it to lay flat. And it's funny because as a quilter, like that's really what you're aiming for is a nice flat block. Doesn't happen with cuddle. Okay, so I've got mine on here. I need to do the same thing here. I, I'm going to sew it this way so we can see the difference with pinning it with the digital on top, all right? So kind of what I want to do today, and hopefully this is what's coming across, is I just want to show you a lot of different ways of doing so that you can make the right choices for you because there is no one perfect way of doing this. Okay, this is a space too that you want to make sure that you are not stretching this as you go. So you talked about that, about the curl. So these are not curling because I haven't really done anything with them. I, I cut them, I threw them in the dryer, I got rid of the mess. This is a piece of the fabric. This is a digital. This is widthwise. Okay, so I don't want to stretch the fabric because are you ready for this? We're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to stretch it. Okay, so you can see it wants to curl a little bit. And people always talk about this, how it curls. If I stretch this, that curl becomes kind of a permanent. Oh, yeah. A permanent thing. Okay. So that's part of it just being a knit fabric. That's what knits will do is they want to roll. It's one of the reasons that I didn't sew knit garments for a long time is because that roll drove me crazy. Now I understand it's just part of it. But every time you stretch it, it just gets more of a roll, okay? So try really hard to avoid stretching as you're doing this, trying to get them to be in the right place, pin it, and not move it too much, okay? Because part of it is when we're doing patchwork and we're using cotton, then a lot of times we do, we kind of tug it to get it to go where we want it to go, keep a little tension on it. And what I found is with the cuddle, it's not such a great idea. That curl, once it's in there, it's not coming out. It's not coming out. And you can't iron it out. No, like, yeah, like that one I curled enough that it's kind of just, it's stuck there and I can yep. push it back, but you'll just continue to fight it. Yeah. So try not to. All right. So let's do this. So again, this is the width wise of the fabric with the digital on the top. All right. I'm going to start in a little bit. I must have I must have made a mistake. What happened? Somebody noticed that you're a barefoot sewer. Sorry. Oh, that's all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Also, I am. barefoot show sewers unite. That's right. We are the majority. Yes. I'm actually barefoot on both feet today, which is kind of rare. Most of the time, I just have one shoe on. And I kind of flip between them. So you can see all the purple that's along here, mm -hmm. right? And that's just, that's the naps fighting each other. So if the naps are going the same way, you won't get that. If the naps are going opposite direction, there's kind of just no way to argue against it. So I'm kind of just trying to, like I said, I keep an eye on my half inch line with that bottom layer and just kind of um, keep that at the half inch and not worry too much about the other because I can't, I can't fight it. Okay, so I can see this. I keep my stiletto here because I can keep the fabric down because it does want to push forward just a little bit. So if I, and I don't know if you guys can see it when I'm sewing, but what I'm doing is I'm pushing it down as it goes underneath the foot to kind of keep it even. All right, with this, if it starts to build up and it's stretched too much, if it stretches more than an, an eighth of an inch off the end, you should probably try to like fix that. Um, which means un unpicking things, but so you don't want it to get too far off. It gets a little off. You're fine. Eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, just chop it off at the end. It's fine. Okay, okay. Hang on. So it, it, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch hanging off the end, you just cut the extra Just off. cut it off. So, but if this but is grown, more than a quarter of an so inch, see, this is, right. So see this grew just a little bit and I just let it at the end. I'm not going to unpick this and fix it. I'm just going to let it be there. Okay, and I'll fix it because I have a half an inch seam allowance here, so I've got some wiggle room. It's okay. fine. All okay, right. so you don't even really have to chop it off. Just catch that in your thing. But if it's grown, you know, if these are, if it was this far off, well over like more like three eighths of an inch, it would be so far off that this fabric, one of them has been stretched 
and one of them isn't. And you'll end up getting that wavy thing happening, which you don't. You're trying to avoid that. All right. So there is there is some give in it and some like, I don't know, you get it. You be easy with yourself. All right. But it's good, it's good to know what your tolerances are, I yes. think, actually. So, uh, you know, what you're looking at is. is That's my tolerance right yeah, there. There you go. OK. Anything actually, more if I put that, this here, if I put this here, you can see how much that is. All right. That's about my tolerance. More than that. And I'd be like, mm, I should probably fix something. OK. Got it. Does that make sense? Yep. OK. All right. So let me pick up some pins. Oh, you know what I saw that they had? You found my Zirkle, which I is did. great because it got lost for a little while. And I love my Zirkle. But they have them over at so much stuff. They do. Zirkle. Yeah. They have the red one. Mine is an old one. I found out this Here was the, like this the is, first, this is the, this is the the fun first thing. round. Ready? I love it. You just chuck them. <laughs> so those little like, you know, tiny things. And if you do it so that the needle goes down first, all the heads will come out the outside. But you got to put the metal down first. I think. Got it. Little tricks. Okay. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. All right. You know what I get to dance with besides you what? today? The chair. The chair. Mm -hmm. Have fun with <laughs> That's that. That's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to put our strip together. So the way that the quilt is put together is in strips. So we're actually putting this together. It's a combination of a patchwork. And then we're going to put it together like a stitch and flip. All right. So what I'm doing is I get all of my strips together and then I'll put it together. And I did that most of that yesterday. I'll show you the rest of it today. So here's my two blocks. I've got one block here. I put a sashing piece in. I've got my other block. So now I need to put my other sashing piece in so I can check my nap. My nap goes this direction because that way isn't right. That is okay. showing up really well on camera yeah, right now. Great. <laughs> All right. So that goes here and that goes here. All right. So I just want to make sure everything is right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these together and then sew that onto here because I find that easier than doing the little pieces together. I want to sew it and make this into a bigger piece and sew it on. Okay, so I'm going to flip this here. And this, again, is one of those that should be 13 inches. It's a little bit off, but if I pull it, it's fine. Okay, and because this is the length of fabric, I know that I can't, I'm not really stretching it. I'm making it fit. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. It, it does. So, so because I, this so doesn't stretch at all, it's just fitting. It won't curl this direction when you pull it. Nope. Okay. Nope. Because because so I need the first thing I need to do it. is pin my ends. <laughs> yeah, because it's lengthwise, lengthwise doesn't stretch. That's one of the big differences with cuddle. If so, if you have used a different kind of minky that just stretches in all the directions, that's because it wasn't ours. All right. So cuddle minky okay. only stretches widthwise. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stretch that and I'm gonna get that nice and flat where I want it to fit. Okay, and I'm going to sew this from the purple side because I like the purple, sewing on the purple better. All right, it doesn't somebody, tend to somebody's move. double checking you. you okay. got, do you have your block orientation right? I believe so. I think so. It's my last row. I don't know. We'll see. That seems right. They're not copied, so that's good. Right? They're nope. not. And these don't match. So that's fine. Got it. Though there are some places that you do want them the, yep. the sashing to match, and we're going to get there. We'll right? talk the about that. We'll talk about how Teresa had to unsew yesterday to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> All of the fun things. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do my second row of pinning because I really want this to stay nice and stable. So I did try to do some sewing without so much pinning yesterday. It's not really. <laughs> Oh, no, there are my feet. Um, just dancing with the, sorry, <laughs> dancing with the chair. We need a little slidey chair. Oh, well, it wouldn't work on the carpet anyway. It's fine. All right. So we're going to sew this again. Half inch seam allowance. Okay. We have any other questions out there yet, or is it going all right? I think we're going all right now. Okay. Are we cooking with gas? Propane. Oh, okay. <laughs> a bit with gas, gas. 
So my Correct. aunt always says, and I think it's hilarious. Propane when and things propane are... accessories. <laughs> wrong, wrong show. Wrong show. We're going to get taken off of YouTube. My, my, my invitation is not that good. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> so I'm taking my pins out as I go, making sure that I'm just working my way through here. All right. So I think that when Michelle made the other sample for me, thank you, Michelle. And when she did, I think she did all of this piecing and then had it and then quilted it. Um, and we're going to do this in bits and pieces and actually do it in rows. Talk about it a little bit more. I just remembered that though. So, you know me, it comes into my brain. It just comes out my mouth. Like <laughs> no filter. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I've got that. So this makes this easier because now I'm going to sew this whole thing onto this whole thing. So I'm not sewing that little bit, which for me, like the, the weight of it, it's two bigger things. They sew together easier than a big thing and a little thing. I just find it works better. So again, I'm gonna do that same thing here. Okay, using my little clover pins. If you've got the clover pins, the ones that are in the box set are these guys that have the same on both sides. These are the little bit thinner ones. We were talking about these on I Love Cuddle. Those are the, the, the medium weight ones are the ones that are uh, two colors on they're, the head. Right, and yeah. they're not quite as uh, strong as these. They both work for cuddle for different reasons. What doesn't work for cuddle particularly often is the lightweight version, which is the, the flower head pins that are blue. Right, right. And those are just a lighter weight one. So there's a few different weights of pins, and we'll um, we got lots of them. Okay. So let me get these in here. I feel like this might get a little bit off. The ones that the, the thickest ones show up in a box. Oh, yeah. Like that, as opposed to on a card. Those are my favorites. Look at my hands in the way. There we go. Okay. Too many things. So you'll notice that this ripples a bunch and it's okay. It'll work out. Don't panic. Okay. So now I've got one more that I'm going to sew. All right. All right. You ready? Yep. You didn't climb over the chair completely this time. That helped. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this, the purple is a little bit bigger than this. So one of my seam allowances looks like this one got a little bit big. So, and look at, you can see on this, it's the bottom seam on both of these. So I kind of wonder which one I sewed. Like, I wonder if, if I sewed with this on top and with this on top, and that's why the bottom grew. I think that's what happened. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting because I feel like it changes a lot. Hold on. It feels funny under there. What's going yep. on? There we go. We're back. It got folded. Okay. Yeah. Listen, listen to your your gut instincts when something feels funny under there. <laughs> I really do a lot of sewing by howing things uh how it how things feel. Okay. So I'm gonna get my pin out of there. Oh no. There we go. Move that one. Okay, and I'm going to do this little thing where I kind of give it a little a little tension here as I go to get it to go over these. And I want to I do want to try to open those seams up. So I haven't really talked about that, but as I'm pinning them, I'm trying to pin the seams open. So you can see on here, they're all trying to get those open. All right, and that will help it to be flatter as we sew it on the next part. Okay, and again, so that digital cuddle sometimes just likes to curl, so make sure you catch it. Don't let it get away from you. Don't let it get away. If it does, you're, just go back and fix it. You're the boss. You're the boss. You bought the fabric. It's fine. Okay, you tell it what to do. All right, so now we've got that all sewn together. You can see that there's a little bit of, not gathering, but it's a little fluffier on this side than it is on this side. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, because there's that. a little more fabric here, and it's really just because my seam allowances were the tiniest bit too small there. All right. So now we've got our strips. So when you're putting this piece together, you're going to, when you've gotten, when you're putting the whole thing together, you're going to have four of these strips, four strips of three because you, you make 12 blocks 
arrange them, then you'll have four strips like this that are one, two, three blocks with the sashings in between. Okay, so that's what you're going to have and then you're going to put it together. I've got mine mostly put together. Let's try, see if we can do this. It's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of quilt for a little area. Should I come around? No, I'm no. coming over here. Okay. Now you get to, yeah, now everybody gets to see my shoes too. There we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this dance is different. It is different. All right. So I'm going to move my pins so I don't get those stuck into the back of the quilt. Not that anybody has ever done that with me, right? All right. So what I've done is I started and I measured down a little bit because I know I have a five inch um, border that I'm going to put all the way around this quilt. Let me get the finish over here so you can see. So when I'm done, it's going to have this border that I'm going to put around it. Right now, I'm at a point that I don't have that border on. So I measured down just a little bit and then I started piecing. And I pieced it just like you do a regular stitch and flip quilt. So if you've done any of our quilt kits, they're done exactly like that. If you have not, then you should join us next week when we do a cuddle uh, or the crazy eight. And we're going to show you how to do a big uh, strip quilt, which will be in exactly like that. So we've done the first row. I sewed on the sashing. I did the second row. Let's see if we can get this to come up. I did the sashing. did the third row. I did the sashing. And now we're on the fourth row. Okay. If there's any questions on that, ask. What is the finish size of this quilt? Uh, I Ish. think it's around 50 by 60 ish we'll see when i finish uh, <laughs> i think that's about what it is though it's around 50 by 60. uh so this is what we were talking about earlier when i was saying that it got off so because my piecing when i got this nice and flat this is actually probably about an inch too long so my seam allowances somehow grew or i didn't cut it right Something happened. So I'm just going to trim those off when I do the next section. Okay. But I am trying to make sure that these stay the same. So when I pin this next row, let's do that. I'm going to make sure that they stay the same as the row before, the same width as the row before. Okay. So I'm going to sneak over here. Okay. Oh, I don't know where you are anymore. Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there we've got the piece out. So I'm going to lay my next row down. I want to make sure that my nap is going the right direction. So when talking about orientation, oh, you know what? I think I'm too short on that end. Shh. We'll see what happens when I finish the quilt. Right. Oh, you the, the the batting and the backing? Yeah. Oh. I think I told you that. I was like, I think I'm short. Okay. So this is technically the bottom side. Yeah. So this is the last row that's going to flip over this direction. I can see my orientation on these guys because these are directional prints. So I can see that that's the way it goes. I flip it over. And I'm going to pin it. So I'm going to pin it at one end and I'm going to pin it at the other end. But, um, sorry, I have to come over here and get a pen really quick, a pen. Um, but one of the things I want to do first, and this is what we were talking about with the sashing, is that the sashing goes between these two. So these, you can see my block, should match up. You can also see that I sewed this one with a little bit bigger seam allowances than this one. I don't know if you can tell that, but I can. Okay, so I know that this wants to keep going. So I need to even these up. That was the thing that I did on the other one is that when I sewed it on, I wasn't careful and I just pinned it. And so then when the sashing, this next row of sashing, it was over. And so it kind of cocked and it was terrible. It did a little dog leg. It really did. And so I had to take it out. It was sad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the edge of my ruler and the seam line that I sewed so that I can basically get it straight across from there. And I'm going to use this when I'm pinning on my next row. What was that pin you're using? This is just the, the friction fine liner that I have. Got it. It's a felt okay. tip. It's a it's felt tip. Deep. Got it. It comes out with heat. So if I wash this, it'll come out. 
and uh, it's not going to bleed through anything. I was using a ballpoint, just a regular like Bic pen, and then I kind of worried about that coming through on the white because I was a little heavy handed. Okay, so these I know where my sashing needs to match. So let's do this again so that I make sure and have my nap going the same direction. Now I'm going to flip this over and now I can easily see where I need those to match up. All right. And you're going to pin there first. I am indeed. So I'm going to pin one. And open. And the seam's open. Right. And then I pin the other one. Okay. So these I'm pinning perpendicular just basically because that makes it much easier for me to keep control of what's happening there. All right, so we're going to move over here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one because now I know that this has to stretch to this point to be even there. Okay, so this is what I didn't do on the first one. And as I stitched over here, these got off and I didn't, I didn't have them to the right tension or whatever you want to phrase that out. Okay. Is that the right phrase, tension? The right word? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. It's a I word. didn't pull it hard enough. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So this, the same thing, I want to get it over here, and I want to match the end of this fabric, which you might not be able to see very well because you can see that purple really well. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here. So I'm measuring against my seam line and this edge, and I want to keep that even. All right. And I'm actually going to go ahead and mark this. Hold on. It's off the board and it's making me crazy. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this a little bit more because when I do the fold over, I want the, the square, the block to be square. After I do the next part and I flip it and baste it. Okay. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a guideline that if, when I put my block down, it should be straight here. So some of this is a little bit, maybe a little finicky to do, but I find that it really helps to get a nice square quilt. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, so I'm coming up the side of the water spot fabric, lining it up with my purple. Okay. And then this should be straight up the side so that when I put my next row because I'm going to do my borders then they'll fit there and I'll have something straight to aim against all right so now we're just going to pin this all the way across and then we'll sew it so okay do we have any questions that I need to answer no I think we're good for a minute okay so what I want to talk about here then is the batting so on this one I ran out of my polyester batting and she didn't have any at the store and the polyester batting so we were like let's use cotton and see what happens warm and natural cotton warm and natural, warm and natural cotton which I like I don't necessarily love it for this okay so you'll see me I'll have to fight it a little bit more part of it is because this fabric is denser or not fabric but the batting is denser and it doesn't um plow through the needle doesn't go through it quite as easily as I wanted to uh, with the cuddle and the and the cotton batting uh, the other thing is it weighs a lot so as I'm sewing it it doesn't work as well here's an example of why I like that box pin this one I cannot get it to come back up because it's just bending underneath there but the box pins are heavier and they just come back up like, I think they're like the 0.75. I think they're 0.75, and the uh, red and peachy ones are 0.55. Right. Okay, scooting over. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stab a pin in there, too, between these two. And I'm going to try and make sure to stitch those so that they are open. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this. I don't know where that pin came from. Looks like I accidentally stole a pin from someone at the last shop. Sorry, if you were at Cupcake and you're missing one of your pins. <laughs> I've never bought this. This looks like a, a corsage pin almost. Yeah. 
but it was stuck to my pin. So I picked it up somewhere. All right. So what I would recommend is that you use a polyester batting. We also talked about using a different backing if you wanted to do it without any batting. You remember we talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to just do it with the SF-101, because that would give you body enough to do that. The other is, let me grab this real quick. So this is the poly batting. This is, this is the scrap I had. It was not going to cover the quilt at all. <laughs> I couldn't even do a quilt block. Pull it up so you can see how much quilt. <laughs> this was my scrap. Not enough to make a quilt out of. So it's just what it is. But this one is um, not as dense. I don't know if we can get it to really show because it's stuck down there. But this is a lot lighter. This is just a lot oomphier. This is also cotton, so it weighs more. This is poly, so it weighs kind of nothing, which is great. Okay, so this is my choice for batting. You can also just use cotton. So this is just quilting cotton that she had at the store. This is from Moda and their Bella Solids. It's just regular cotton. You can absolutely use this as your batting as well that will kind of hide those seam allowances in the back if you want to use mm. a digital cuddle, but will also give you stability because as you can see, you kind of need something that will give you some shape to this, okay? So if you're using the SF-101, that's the, what would give you the shape is that if you're using, if you're not using that, you should definitely use some sort of a inner Okay. Hey, Marianne, I see your question. You're on to something. What is that? Oh, yeah. She just, she just, uh, she's I'm, way ahead. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to bring it up later when oh, we get I will, there? For sure. Okay. I just wanted to let her know I see her. Okay. Is it something I'm messing up right now? Absolutely hey. not. Nope. <laughs> it's something you're about to show everybody. Okay. And she just got ahead of it. Okay. All right. There's another one of those. I like the way her brain works. I do too. Whatever it is. You do. I like when people <laughs> think ahead. I like it when somebody else thinks the same thing I do, because then it proves I'm not just crazy. <laughs> there is some some reasoning. All right. Grab those pins. All right. You ready to go back? Okay. Okay. So we've got it all pinned down. I've double pinned the entire thing. I pinned the two rows. If you're new to double pinning, this, if you want to zoom in here. Okay, this double row will help me to be able to sew a half inch seam allowance ish um, and hope for the best. Okay, and get it a lot flatter and keep it in control. All right, so now this is partly why I wanted the table. It's because I got a lot of quilt here. And trying to hold on to that up in the air while I'm sewing is not fun. So I will tell you, it's really important when you're sewing this. I found that every time that I struggled with trying to get this through my machine, it was because it was stuck in my lap and I'd have to bring it up. So pushing your machine back just a little bit, if you can, getting some on your table, keeping the weight off of it this direction will help it immensely to get through your machine. All right, because at this point we're sewing through three layers of cuddle, except when we go over seam allowances and then there's another layer plus the batting. Okay, so it's a bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sew this. Give it a little tug. I'm going to do a back stitch. I'm going to go forward. Okay, so I'm going to move things so I can get to my pins and get them away. And then I'm going to try to keep this down. So this wants to kind of build. And I'm going to try to keep it in position as I'm going. And that's going to keep me kind of stopping and checking things as I go here. Okay, because what I don't want is to get any little pleats in here. And sometimes that requires a little bit of manipulation. All right, so take your time with this. All right, we're gonna Unlike come back me, because I'm not the, gonna watch the whole I'm not taking my time. Okay, <laughs> good luck. Okay. Oh no, the bobbin thread. We're playing bobbin chicken again. All right. I have to switch that out. In the middle of the seam? In the middle of the seam. I know. Can you believe it? Uh, okay. The next time it beeps at me there. Really? I just wound this yesterday. Okay, so it's gonna take a, you a little it's gonna take you a little more than one bobbin to get through piecing the front. That's what we know now. 
Okay. So I'm kind of keeping a little hand back here and I'm kind of keeping tension on it so that I can get it to feed through because uh, I don't want it to build up when I get, oh, there it was right at the seam allowance. Really? <laughs> All right. So take this I was going to come around to show your left hand action, okay. but now we're, we're going to talk about this bobbin. We're going to take the bobbin out and I have one that's partially around here. Oh, yeah, I went on. Gone. All gone. Okay. So we're going to put in one that's there a little bit. No, no, it's not the same color. No. <laughs> not the same kind of thread even. So we'll see if my automatic tension doohickey works on this. Okay. These are the little pre-wound pre bobbins. I think they're Filtech. Fill tag. Um, the little pre-wound bobbin. So it's not full, but we should be able to get across the seam. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay. It's still polyester, though. It's still polyester. Yep, okay. they're just pre-wound bobbins that work in the baby locks. Um, so I did have it wound with the gray that I was using, which truthfully I should have been using bobbin, white bobbin anyway, because the backing is white. But, you know, sometimes I don't think these things through all the way. Oh, and it's going to get lost in the nap, mostly. Mostly, yeah. Okay, so I'm just trying to keep this nice and flat as we get here to where the seams are because I want those, if you remember, that's where my sashing should match from one to the other. So I want to keep it nice and even. If you're doing this and you struggle with keeping that even, one of the things that we have found is that if you uh, sew that section first, and then go back and sew the rest of your seam, it's helpful. You can kind of base that in position and then uh, work from there. So when you're trying to get seams to match, I think we did that in a recent show where I, I sewed one little part first and I can't remember what it was that we did. Hmm. So basically, so so asked if I would Thank repeat you. it. And so basically what I'm doing is where um, these match here. Can you show this? Oh, you can't really see it. Yeah. So where I was trying to get this to match with the line, um, I can't really point because I can't tell with the camera here. Yeah. Um, so this line, I got it to match. If I'm trying really hard to make that match and I'm having a hard time as I'm sewing across to get it to stay there, I can go and sew that little section first. So I would go and sew this section here and then come back and sew my whole seam. So that way I've kept that really in the right place and then I can work around that. Got it. And make it, make it be where <laughs> I want it to be. The pins should do it, but if things are, if things are getting squirrely, yeah, you exactly. You can go in and just do a little tag, basically like a, a tack a tack stitch. It's just right a little there. basting stitch that'll keep it where I want it to be. Got yep, it. exactly. And um, that works really well for matching seams. So I do that when we're doing when we did the Tuscan quilt. We did that. That's where we did it. Got it. I feel like we did it somewhere else recently too. But it's just kind of a a thing that'll hold it hold it where you want it to be. So the same thing. It's going to be even here hopefully, and match the sashing. And again, I'm just making sure that my fabric stays down. So if I get here and it, this is starting to curl up, I can always put my foot up, stop, push this back down, and then keep going. So make sure that you're keeping those seam allowances open. Otherwise, it gets really, really thick in there. Okay. Take some we're pins gonna, out. We're going to come back around from the Teresa point of view. Okay. I'm going to try to pin this. And again, this seam, when I'll show you my back seams, they're not perfectly straight. And that's okay. All right. So here's where one of these, this is trying to push up on me. So I'm going to kind of force it underneath the foot. Okay. I'm going to try to get this to all lay down. So keeping this all on the table makes a huge difference. So I will say that this seam, despite it being the last one, I fought with less because I was careful about keeping it all on the table as we started here. And that makes a big difference. Okay, so I'm going to get this here. And I want that to end there. So I'm going to use my the little grippy part of my by Annie stiletto. This is why I like this is it has this grippy part right here. So I can put this on my fabric and hold it and it's not gonna slide. And I'm 
to kind of get it to come through here. Okay. All right. Okay. And I can clip my thread. I'll get all of my pins out. We'll see how, how crooked my line is. Okay. All right. I think that's pretty good. Oh, hey, there's wow, a light was, right there. That was your head. That was you my right? head. Yeah, I'm fine. Right. <laughs> okay, so it's a little, a little wobbly. Okay, no big deal. If you don't want the wobbly to show at all, use a Lux Cuddle on the back. It will hide all of your sins, okay? <laughs> I love that. But also, once it's wrapped around you, no one cares because it's soft. But it's not, it's not terrible. All right. So now once we've got it to here, we're going to base this down. I'm going to show you this last step, okay? All right, Marianne, here it comes. So this, <laughs> we want to get this to come over here. And the way that when we do it with the... Um, um, stitch and flip with the strip quilts. We're just going to flip this up and then we just push it out and it works out really well. And that's what we'll do next week. And I'll show you how it works. But what I found is that when I did that, my seam allowances turned stupid ways, stupid ways, as in the wrong way. And it was really frustrating for me because then I was trying to fight with it. So I figured out a way to kind of just manhandle them before we get too far. You remember that piece of paper that you took and you were like, do you need this? And I was like, no, no, throw it away. Oh, I need it right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what I do, that's all right. We'll try not to get any on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray in between here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to pop my seam allowances down and make uh. them stay. All right. So that kind of gets them to be in both the this length. This is so good and the um, tucked where I want them to be. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So I just open it up. It's already open down here. I'm gonna give it a tug and then kind of pat it in place. Okay. So then any sticky that's left over is fine because it's gonna go over. These I found turn just fine. They stay where I want them to, it's great. The lengthwise ones do not, I don't know why. But I just give them a little a little pat pat in the end you will have some sticky on your fingers and that's all right okay just a little bit of the basting spray and that's the odif that i like so much okay there we go one more the one there that's a stick and that one to stick. And it washes right out. So she yep. right, she might have gotten a little bit of overspray over here on the front. Yeah, it'll that, wash out. You should probably and, put a piece of fabric down. Right. And so if you put a piece of the brown paper or parchment paper, freezer paper, scrap paper out of the trash, whatever, uh, recycling, um, you can put this along this edge and then you can spray and it won't get on the front. When you're done, if you have gotten some spray on it, you can just throw it into the wash and it will um, come out. So try to get not get spray on the front because it's better to to have it that way than to actually have to try to get it out. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and spray the back of this. Okay. Make sure that my batting is nice and flat. I don't know what your guys' experience with, with uh, basting spray is, but most basting sprays, if she had sprayed this in a room full of people, everybody would be headed for the exit. <laughs> yeah. Not this. Yeah. I can't smell it and I'm right here. Okay. So I'm gonna just give this a good tug. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, and over here, so if I come over to this side, you can see the little line that I drew before. And I'm gonna make sure that this fits along that line. Okay. Because I want this to stay nice and straight. So as I'm going, I'm kind of just giving this a tug, putting it in position. Getting it down. So up here, I've got a little bit that's not sticking. So Marianne, you're, to answer your question from you know 20 minutes ago, uh, <laughs> not not bad, totally good to to spray the seams open. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. So there we go. So at this point, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my 
um, binding. I'm going to do a smaller binding over there, as you can see. Okay. So and let's then, talk. Can we talk about? I know you don't want to talk about that. Can we talk about that? What How did that happen? The, the fact that the batting is short on this end. Did I cut it wrong? Well, so we want to talk about well, sometimes I make mistakes. That's so, but, but so when I cut off but, the fabric, but it wasn't just that you cut it wrong. We talked about this last night. Basically, like the kit comes with a certain amount of fabric, including right. the backing fabric. And thanks, sorry, I'm talking <laughs> and not paying attention to where my camera's at. I beg your pardon. All right, well, we should show the fabric and not my front. Got it. Um, <laughs> you can't fussy cut the pieces as much right, but as that's you not, thought that's, you could. Right, but that's not what that was. That was this fabric, and I just I just whacked off a chunk at the bottom and didn't measure it. Oh, okay. Got so, it. yeah. So the lesson is measure your fabric before you cut it. Got it. So, yes. Okay. The, the lesson, and like, honestly, you can go around to the front now. Okay. Um, so, honestly, the, the thing is, it's kind of funny because for so much of what, um, when I was sewing in the studio in L.A., is that if I need more fabric, I just went and got more fabric. So it's super easy. I would just be like, oh, I cut it wrong. I'm going to go get more. It's fine. Like, you know? And that isn't really a possibility now. So I'm like, oh, I cut it wrong. Okay. Let so, me see what I can figure out. So, so, how, so what's going so to happen with that? I'm literally just going to put a small border on it and finish it up. Got yeah, it. And yeah. what, about the, what about the batting <laughs> inside of that border? How does that? I don't. It's just going to be a small border. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. It'll just be like a little two-inch border that I'll do the same thing basically as I did on the edges. Okay, cool. I'll make it work. That's what we do, right? We just That's make it work. That's what I wanted to hear about. So... There we go. How do you make it work? <laughs> and this is the, the samples that I carry with me then because then I'm like, so this is what you can do when you mess up because it's not a waste. Like I get to this point because truthfully, so there's a couple of things that you could do if you got to this point that you had cut it wrong. I will, I will just put a small bind or border around it and then I'll trim it so it won't be exactly like the pattern. The other thing you could do is you could actually like do the Franken batting thing that we've talked about. If you're a quilter, you just add some more batting to it. You add a little back and you end up having a little strip on there. That sort of thing happens. And it happens to the best of us because we didn't measure carefully. We didn't put our seam allowances right. We put it on the wrong way. Like all of those sort of things have happened. Um, but you can absolutely add to the backing and create more space. Or you could just make a different size quilt. Either one. Okay. okay. So mine will definitely be mine. They'll be like, oh, that's the one with the tiny borders. That's Teresa's. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. All right. So tiny hopefully, borders. hopefully that answers a bunch of your questions because, yeah, there's another quilting thing that sometimes happens. Yep. Um, so at that point, I would put my borders on and then I'll bind it. Again, we have a video all about binding with cuddle. And there is the booklet about binding with cuddle. Both of those are downloads or the available online so you can get the booklet from our website and on youtube obviously for the video for the binding um i think that we have a winner maybe we should have a winner uh is it what does it say out there oh cuddle patchwork quilt okay there we go there's the winner kcs is the winner so thank you very much for sharing the video yay, yay. we appreciate you very much uh and we will have a winner here afterward. So, Casey, if you could message us on Facebook um, or you can in, uh, info at shannonfabrics.com and send us your mailing address, your um, phone number, email, all that good stuff so we can send you that kit. Make sure that we get that information and get it out to you ASAP. So we will do that. We give away a kit every time. The Beginner Box is an awesome project box that actually you can make six different projects in that. And it has um, accompanying videos, too. So don't forget that. Uh, I think that's all for today. It's a National Quilting Month, again, the giveaway. So make sure you go to the blog. You can sign up for that. There's like a little form that you fill out. I went and checked it out just so I could know what you do. Okay, so make sure you fill out that little form. If you have not joined our I Love Cuddle group, I really suggest that you do. It's a Facebook group, and it's super fun. We're like near 14,000 people on there now. It's so good, and I love that group of people so thank you if you're a part of it. If you are not, go join us there. There's lots of good inspiration. There's more tips and tricks and patterns and all sorts of stuff and more opportunities to win. So we do some exclusive on, on there um, over on the I Love Cuddle group. So I think I think that's all the important stuff. I think we're good. Okay, Can next you show week? us that binding one more time oh, on yeah. the finished quilt? And let me, yeah, you this said is, boom, Oh, boom, so this boom. is, yes, yeah, so this is the... Um, the finished size, which is obviously too big for me to hold up by myself, but here it is. Okay. 
There you go. So there's and, the binding. It's with chenille, which I like a lot. See if we can get that to that, focus. And that comes in Come the on. in the kit. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, the chenille comes in the kit, and I love this for binding. It's my favorite binding fabric. Um, it's super good. It's really stable, and it has a little bit of fuzz, but not a lot. So um, it's fabulous. So next week, we'll be back. Like I said, we'll be talking about doing the Crazy 8, so which is a large 58 by 72 strip throw. We're going to talk about doing that without batting. So if you've been curious, can I do it without batting? Yes, yes, you can. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to do that. We have workshops there as well, and that is at Cotton Blossom right? Cotton Blossom Fabrics. That's correct. Um, which is in Ridgeland, shop Mississippi. with two P's. Right. Yes. Cotton Blossom Fabric Shop. And they are in Ridgeland, Mississippi, north of Jackson. And we will be there next Tuesday. So I'm excited. It's been a long time since I've been there. So that'll be fun. And then uh, we're going to be doing the, the big throw there. So that's our live for next week. And then the week after that, we're going to be at Willow Tree Fabrics in Decatur, Georgia. And Alabama. Decatur, Alabama. Sorry. It's okay. It's, all it's those... hard to keep track of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're in a different state every five minutes. <laughs> we'll be in Alabama, then Georgia. Sorry, I yes. know on the map. Mississippi, Alabama, We are getting Georgia. ahead of ourselves because okay. the beginning of the next tour is almost certainly should be in starting Georgia. in Georgia. Yeah. So we'll be in Alabama at Willow Tree. I know that at least. And we will be there doing a throw pillow. And that'll be kind of fun. We'll talk about how to put a zipper in there and all the different kind of fabrics that you can use and how easy that is. To have a million different throw pillows for your house for every season, every color, every everything. Okay. Super fun. So join us for the next two seasons or two weeks of Sew Together Tuesday. And then we're taking a break. Just so you know, the last two weeks of March, no Sew Together Tuesday. But we'll be back in April. Okay. So we're planning all that. We're excited about it. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much, love, for having us here. Appreciate it very much. Hosting us here at their lake house. It's been super fun. Hopefully, I'm going to see you make a patchwork quilt for National Quilting Month, and don't forget to enter to win, okay? All right, see you next time. Happy sewing. <laughs>